There is also the <clears throat> pushback from people elsewhere that Tamil Nadu in particular has been taking an unnecessarily uh, aggressive or regressive, whatever word one wants, stand on some of the federal issues that other states have not objected to. How does it matter if there are some Tamil children who are learning Hindi, how does it hurt Tamil Nadu's interests? And the other question also of an example like this is the current controversy over the NEET exams. That if you want children in Tamil Nadu to have the right to take exams in Tamil, that's fine, but surely that should then confine them to medical practice in Tamil Nadu. Whereas a NEET examination would enable them to study, prepare and work anywhere in India. How would you respond to these two criticisms? There's a broader issue there about language, and that is that the notion of compulsory Hindi has been uh, kind of the third rail or the, or the lightning rod for politics in Tamil Nadu for over 80, 90 years. We have always felt that if you force some language that we see as non-essential, then it is a slippery slope where pretty soon you'll find either English or Tamil or both being relegated to second class or third class status. So it is at the core of Tamil identity that is our language. I think most cultures' language will be at the core of their identity. In that sense, as Perenangi Rana said, if I have a two-language policy, Tamil because everybody wants their mother tongue first and foremost, and after that English as a means of communication across states, across countries, you know, there's one language that everybody can use and it's actually commercially of value when I go and compete in the world. Why should I need to learn Hindi? And as I pointed out when uh, the parliamentary panel made its recommendation, I said, if you insist on a three-language formula, what you're effectively saying is that those parts of the Hindi heartland cannot be taught English as a second language, even as a second language. And therefore, what you're really saying is that the Hindi heartland gets to have a one-language formula, they'll only know Hindi, and Kerala and Tamil Nadu and Andhra and Telangana and Maharashtra and Gujarat should have a three-language formula, our mother tongue for ourselves, English to speak to the rest of the world, and Hindi to speak to those people who cannot learn English. Right? Why should I need a, you know, a, a three-language formula, basically one for them and three for me, right? So we are completely opposed. I'm happy for anybody who voluntarily wants to speak Hindi. I'll put the last nail in that coffin. If you remember, the states were divided at independence based on linguistic differences. If that is the case, why do we have a Rajasthan and a Bihar and a Uttar Pradesh and a Madhya Pradesh? If all of them we consider Hindi heartland, what happened to all their original languages? That's what happens when you push Hindi down our throats. So we don't want Hindi. Now as far as the need is concerned, Tamil Nadu has the highest per capita doctors per thousand people in our country. Four doctors for every thousand people. Most number of medical colleges, most number of government medical college seats. And we are perfectly far ahead of the national average in medicine in every way. All we said is, if we are funding these medical colleges 100%, and unlike in any other subject, at least to this ex degree, medical education is inextricably intertwined with public health. Right? You cannot run a medical college without a hospital. Right? And if the state is the provider of public health, then our medical colleges, our hospitals, we designed in a way that supports our vision of public health. Primary health centers in every area, including rural areas, and incentives for people to enter postgraduate programs based on how much service they do in rural areas, etc. When it's 100% our money coming out of our budget, not one rupee coming from the union, it's completely linked to public health, which is a state subject. Why do you tell us which exam should be the basis of us sending our children to our colleges? That's the whole point here, right? Now, even if you tell me that the government of India had produced spectacularly better results than Tamil Nadu, or there was some other state that had a brilliant outcome, therefore you say, listen, you can learn from them. We are thoughtful people, we'll try. When I am the leader in the country, why should the fifth ranked student come and tell me how I should do my studies? Makes no sense at all, right? 
so that's the 